Hello, hello, my name is Paolo, this over here is Jiro, and today we're going to do a tutorial on iridescence. So iridescence basically means that uh, the color kind of starts changing across the surface. So a good example of that is like a seashell, you can see there's like purples in the bottom, and then there's like some blues and some greens, and the way that you do the distribution of the colors can be anything, and even the, the different types of colors um, can be different. So for example, in here, there's a, an oily version, you can see those, those colors are a little more subdued, depending on the material that you're going for, uh, they will change. And finally, for example, here we have Beetle, which uh, has those very strong reds, and then just a little bit of the green, and then goes into black. So those are the sort of effects that you were going to be able to make with this. So as you can see in this example, basically the, the purple or the pink colors are staying like near the center and then the blue are like in the edges and then very, very dark uh, on the very rim. And the way that this is working is we're basically grabbing Fresnel. Fresnel, basically what it is, it's uh, grabbing a value that changes based on how much the normal of a particular point is looking towards the camera. So if it's looking really towards the camera, it goes to black. If it's good looking perpendicular to the camera, it goes to white. And that's basically all that Fresnel does. And why does that work? Because since it's looking that way and it's white, and then over here as it turns, it turns black, there's like a gradient there. And that gradient is what allows us to get like that contour. So here we're looking at basically the shader with nothing. You can see it's super flat, it doesn't have any color. If I grab here and I create a node called uh, Fresnel, you can see it starts white over there and it goes towards black. If I hook that up out here and then we preview it, you can see now this parts are black and this parts are white. This works really well when you're looking at a sphere. So for example, here in the sphere is white on the edge, uh, black in the center, but if you switch to a cube, as you can see, it kind of stops working. And the reason it stops working is because the normal uh, of this uh, part is the same no matter the point, right? Because it's flat. So Fresnel is really useful for things that have a little bit of roundness to them. It's not that good when you have flat surfaces. Uh, so the effect is pretty simple. Basically, we grab Fresnel, which is the thing I just showed you. And then we use that as the, the value that we put in to sample a gradient. And I have a bunch of gradients over here different ones will give different effects. So for example, if I grab this one, which is like full rainbow and I hook it in, you can see already the preview here. Once I put it in, you can see full preview of iridescence. So if you're going for something more neon crazy, this will do you the trick. And really you can like tweak the gradient to be kind of whatever you want and get like different feels for different things. Um, so for example, this uh, red one is a little more a little more intense, you know, and you get like the yellows in between. So if you take a look at the gradient, basically uh, it's starting, you can see the yellow is right here. There's the red, which is the one that we have at the edge. So basically this will be the zero, which is the part that's black. And then as it goes towards white, it will start basically going up the, the gradient up until this, this one here. And again, you can tweak anything you want in between. So for example, this teal, you can see a little bit of teal there, but uh, we could also make it, um, go a little more extreme so this is an HDR color so we can like increase the intensity if we wanted to then we save it and now the teal is as you can see way more powerful right so you can adjust a lot of those colors to kind of look exactly how you want you also don't have to set gradients like this this is just very comfortable for me to just show different examples but uh, you can also make this into a texture for example you could like be saving those little gradients into a texture and then just sample from there so once you uh, sample this with a Fresnel, I'm, this part is uh, pretty optional. Right now I'm just adding like an option here for being able to reduce how much it looks, how much you can see it. So for example, if I hook up this one, which I want it to be a more like a pearl look, as you can see, this is white here, but the colors on the edge is like super intense. So I have this iridescent strength here that I can tweak to see how opaque, how strong do I want uh, that iridescence to be. Uh, other things that you can use is, for example, the Fresnel power, which goes into the Fresnel node, can be used to kind of move where the range is. So you can see, for example, here, as I push it in, the, the colors kind of get pushed in. Uh, so after the LERP that we used to regulate how much we wanted to show, we go into a saturate just to make sure that we don't go for values beyond one or below zero. Uh, and this part is not really important for the iridescence itself. This is just basically grabbing a normal texture and hooking it up. It's just the regular PBR stuff, grabbing the metallic, grabbing the smoothness and grabbing the AO. The way the PBR kind of interacts with it actually can look really cool. So for example, here is uh, pretty metallic, obviously it's based on the map. So if I lower the metallic, you can see now it kind of looks a little more like 
plastic, which looks a little weird for this one. Uh, but if I go like fully metallic and fully smooth, you can see now this looks a little more like the scarab that we were looking at earlier. You know, it's like very, very clearly metal and has that shininess. I think this looks really cool. And you can see some of the colors here. Uh, this is actually reflecting from the skybox. The colors that you're seeing reflected here. And that's just because the metallic is so high. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, you can get some pretty cool looking effects. The shader is not super complicated, but it uh, does allow for a lot of variety. Just by tweaking the gradients and then tweaking the, you know, the settings for PBR, the metallic and the smoothness and stuff, you can get some really cool looking things. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please give it a like. Maybe some comments help me out with the algorithm. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these tutorials. And also I stream on twitch.tv slash pablomakes on Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays. So if you ever want to catch me, I'm there. Uh, I'm not often doing stuff like this, you know, shaders and coding and game dev, all that sort of stuff. So hope to see you there. Take care. Be good. Adios. Well, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.